All right, so let's continue with what we were talking about yesterday. I think I started example three yesterday. I don't know if I got through it all. So let's just start again, all right? And I'm gonna change this so I can write. All right, let's see, there we go. And let's see if it writes, good. All right, so example three. So if you were taking notes yesterday, I think we did like one problem from example three. Anybody take notes yesterday? Was anybody awake yesterday? I knocked out about half of you, I think. Um, but it was a tough day, first day back, is that why? All right, whoops. Good, good, I hope we're all locked in. All right, so here it is. How do we say that thing right there? Is that F times X, is that what that is? F of X is what we say, F of X. Uh, we're not going to, yeah, we are going to do this today. Um, remember what I said yesterday, does it always have to be the letter F? No, it could be other letters. I think a lot of times they use, let's see, what do we use? G and H, I believe. Um, I think they're just going to use G. But, yeah, it could be any letter. It doesn't matter. But most of the time, most of the time, it's F and G, sometimes H, depending on how many equations that we have, right? So this is f of x equals 4x plus 3. Remember what f of x means. What is it a replacement for? It's just a simple replacement for what? Yeah, for what letter though? Instead of f of x equals 4x plus 3, we normally would have it what? y equals 4x plus 3, right? But instead of y equals 4x plus 3, we're going to have f of x equals 4x plus 3. And what we're going to do right now is probably a reason why they do this because if you said y equals 4x plus 3, then you would say, you know, find y if x is equal to. So you have to write all that stuff out. A little cumbersome. We're used to it because we've done that since Algebra 1. But this is a little bit more streamlined. It's a little more clean, I guess. I guess that's the reason. I've never really done any research or been told, like, why we use this notation compared to just y equals something. But that's my, uh, that's my guess. It's just a little more streamlined. So... Here's what they're going to do. So this is part A. There's parts A, B, and A, B, C, and D for this. So it says find, each one of these says find, and that's all you have to write, find, and then F of 3. I think we did this one yesterday, didn't we? All right. I think so. So it just says find F of 3. It does, you don't have to say solve for Y if X is equal to 3. All right. That's the way they would have used to say it. But now they just say find f of 3. Don't you think that's a little more streamlined, a little easier to say? Yeah, I think so. But you got to know what that means, f of 3. It basically means you just plug in 3 for wherever you see an x. All right? It's very simple. It's just very simple substitution. Not hard. We're just trying to show you this notation. Because you're going to see, as if anybody takes upper level math, you're going to see this function notation all the time. You're going to be so used to it, you won't even think about it anymore. But this is like the first time that many of you have seen this function notation, all right? So um, that's what we're doing here. It's just taking baby steps is all we're doing. There you go. All right, so let's do this. The math is super easy. It's just knowing what to do, okay? What to do with that three. Well, you just substitute it in for that x right there. So it's just four times three plus three, very easy. That's 12 plus three and that's 15, and that's your answer. It's as easy as that. No big deal, all right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes, not long, but now that you know how to do this, I want you to find all these other things, all right? So do this in your notes and come up with an answer. Probably one minute should be enough. Now, this next one's kind of weird, but I'm going to put it there anyway. All right, so find these three right there. I'll give you one minute. You should be able to do all three of these in one minute. We're still using this function, this f of x function. We're still using that same function, but now we're just putting different numbers into it. You might even be able to do it in your head, but just write down an answer. That's an r, correct. Yeah, that's kind of weird, but you should be able to do b and c. That's a zero. Yes, this is f of 0. So this is f of negative 1, f of 0. This is f of r. All right, go ahead. you got 30 seconds left.
I don't even care if you share your work on this, okay? Just come up with an answer. Just want to see if you get the same answer. Did we do Part B yesterday, I think? Seems like we might have. I don't know. I said f of 0. I read them off. Part D looks like it's hard because it's a letter, it's f of r, but it's actually very simple. If you understand what you're doing with these letters or these numbers right here, you do basically the same thing with r, so it's really not as hard as it looks. All right, who got an answer for f of negative 1? What'd you get for f of negative 1? I got a 1, I got a 7. Negative 1, that's correct. It's negative 1, so let's do this. So again, you're just replacing negative 1 in for that x right there. So it's 4 times negative 1 plus 3. I'll just do it across like this. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, just like that. All right, who got an answer for f of 0? What would you get for that? Anybody? 3. Good. Now it's pretty easy. It's just 4 times 0 plus 3. That's 0 plus 3, which is 3. You're good to go. What about the R? What do we do with that? That's it. It's just 4R plus 3. That's all you can do. All right, because what are you doing? You're, replace, you're taking this in the parentheses, the F of whatever is inside that parentheses, and you're just replacing it with that X, or you're, you're putting it into that X, right? And so instead of X, it's whatever's in the parentheses. In this case, it's an R, so the only thing is just 4R plus 3. It's kind of weird but that's what you do. It's pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah. And really the rest of the stuff is not much different. Uh, this next example is pretty much the same. Um, and there's a few kind of like that part D right there that's kind of weird, but let's do another one. This is, remember I said you don't have to use F of X, you could use other letters. This is an example, example four. This is an example where they don't use f of x. Oops. It says let g of x. And that doesn't mean anything different than the f of x. Just because it's a g doesn't mean we changed anything. All right? It means the same exact thing. It just means a function. It's just functional notation is what they call it. x squared minus 2x. All right? Now, you can't do anything right now. you got to know what are you plugging in for x, all right? So we got a part A, B, C, D again. So this time, instead of f of a number, we're going to put what? g of that number, because this is our g function. The other one was an f function, because sometimes you might have like two or three functions next to each other. You don't want to call everyone f of this, f of that. One will call f of something, f of x. We'll call one g of x. Maybe another one call H of X, um, but it's all there is, okay? So just because it's a different letter doesn't mean. Now, the arithmetic on this one might be a little bit more difficult, but I'm going to give you a chance to do these as well. I'll give you a couple minutes to do these because it's a little bit more involved than the other one, but it's the same idea. It's the same principle. In fact, B, C, and D, you really don't, have to do much as far as arithmetic. But again, it's a little bit odd. I'll read them off to you in a second as soon as I finish. All right, so this is 2 over 5, g of 2 over 5, 2 fifths. This one is an s. It's not a 5, it's an s. So g of s. This one is g of s squared, so it's s, the letter s squared. And this is g of negative f, all right? g is my function, just negative f is the thing that we're just plugging in for x. So remember what we do. Everything in the parentheses, all we're doing is plugging it in to that x, and we're also plugging it in to that x right there, okay? So what are you gonna do? You're gonna put a 2 fifths in for this x, then what are you gonna do with that 2 fifths? Look at it. What are you doing to the x? 
you're squaring it, okay? So what do you do with the two fifths? You square it. Then you go minus times two times two fifths, all right? It's a little bit of math, a little bit of algebra. Well, actually, not much algebra. It's just arithmetic. That's all it is. But arithmetic with some fractions. So I'll give you, you've got about a minute and a half left. So do that one, this one, this one, this one. Part B should be super easy. It's probably the easiest one out of all of them. And again, what's ever in the parentheses, you're just taking that, substituting it in for the x. So you're just taking that, sticking it in for the x, and do whatever it tells you to do up in this uh, little function thing. Anybody get part A yet? Who's got an answer for part A? Somebody's got to have an answer. Alex, what'd you get? Very good. That's what I got. Negative 16 over 25. Anybody else get that? All right. Good. Anybody try it and not get that? Anybody still halfway through it? Yep. Let's do it. So we're going to put a two-fifths in for this. So what are we going to do? We're going to go two-fifths. And what are we going to do with that two-fifths? We're going to square it, all right? And then you put a minus, put a 2, 2 times whatever x is. This is my x right here, the 2 fifths. So it's 2 times 2 fifths. Since it's a fraction, I'm going to write it like that. Is that all right? Yeah, I mean, this is not hard. You don't even have to find a common denominator or anything, OK? This is about the easiest kind of fractions you can do. 2 fifths squared, what does that mean? What do you do with this 2 fifths? Well, you multiply it by what? itself, 2 fifths. Or you just go 2 squared and 5 squared. So what's 2 squared? That's 4 over 5 squared, which is 25. Okay, So that's this right here, 4 over 25. Put a minus, and now you just multiply these together. It's very simple. 2 times 2, 4. Actually, you do have to find a common denominator. Sorry about that. I lied. So it's 2 over 5. Everybody got that part, right? This part might be where you get stuck. So we've got to find a common denominator. It's pretty easy. You've got a 5 and a 25. What would your least common multiple be? What's, what's the denominator that's common with both of these? It's the smallest. Well, 25 doesn't divide into 5. So it's got to be, it's got to be at least as big as one of the denominators or bigger. It can't be smaller than either one of these denominators. So it's 25, right? So the denominator is 25, so I'm gonna put a over 25 here, minus, put a over 25 here. Well, we didn't do anything to change this 25, did we? So we don't do anything to the top. That's still four over 25. But we did have to change this. What did we have to do to that five in order to get 20 multiplied by five? So what do you do to the top then? Multiply it by five as well. Okay, everybody see that? So I multiply the bottom by 5, multiply that by 5, so I get a 20. Now do you see where Alex got the negative 16? 4 minus 20, that's negative 16. Your common denominator, you just keep it that, keep it 25. There you go. You can't reduce it. Nothing divides into either one of these. So that's your answer right there. All right?
Let's do the rest. The rest are pretty easy, especially part B. Part B was easy. So what are we doing? We're taking that S and we're just putting it in for the X. So if I put an S in for the X, what do I get? I just get S squared minus 2 times what? 2S minus 2S. That's it. Okay, so wherever you see an X, you just put an S. That's all there is to it. Nothing tricky about it. Okay, what about this one? Well, every time you see an X, what are you going to put in for it? You're going to put a what? Why is nobody talking to me? <laughs> Why well, I, I read them off to you. Okay, after I wrote them down, I read off what they were. I said they were S's, S squared. Got to listen. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to take that X and I'm going to replace it with a what? An S squared. Okay, there's the X. But what am I doing to that x? I'm squaring it. So what am I doing to this? I'm squaring it. Okay? It's just simple substitution. Whatever's in that parentheses, I'm just sticking it in for the x. And then I'm doing whatever operation it says to do to it up here. So minus 2 times what? What am I replacing my x with? Not just an s, but a what? An s squared. We're not quite finished because we can simplify one thing here. What can we simplify? That first thing right there. Remember how to do that? When you have an exponent, take it to another power. What do you do with those? Multiply them together. So what do I get? S to the what? Fourth. Minus 2S squared. And that's all I can do. There's nothing else I can do with that. That is my answer. It's kind of weird because we don't get like just a regular number. Even this was just a regular number, wasn't it? Well, it's a fraction, but still, it's a number, though. right? That's not even a number. It's just got letters in it and stuff like that. But there's going to be times, again, we're starting at the ground floor. we got to work our way up to stuff. All right? Later on, when you get to upper-level math, maybe even later in here, um, you're going to have to do stuff like this, and you're going to have to, and hopefully it'll make sense. All right, now what are you going to do with this? Instead of an X, what am I going to replace it with? Not just an F, but a what? A negative F. So here's what I do. Put a negative F. What am I going to first do to that negative F? I'm going to square it. So I put it in parentheses. It's really important that you do that. Okay, super important that you put it in parentheses because it's a negative. Minus 2 times what? Negative F. Okay, because again, all I'm doing is replacing that X with a negative F. That's all I'm doing. Okay, I'm substituting negative f in for that x. And we can simplify this a little bit. Negative f squared. Well, I know it's going to be f squared, but what's a negative squared? Well, it's a negative times a negative. What's that? Positive. So it's just what? f squared. So negative f in parentheses squared is the same thing as just positive f squared. Make sense? What's this going to be? But what's my sign going to be? Positive. It's going to be a plus, okay? So I need a plus because negative 2 times negative f is positive what? 2f. And that's your answer right there. So really the function stuff wasn't the hard part of this, was it? It was just the substitution, all right? But you've done substitution before. You did it in Algebra 1. You did it in Algebra 2. You even did a little bit of it in geometry, okay? I ta taught, well, I didn't teach you guys geometry, but... I teach geometry, and um, we do that all the time. All right, let's do one more. Then maybe you'll have a few minutes to work on this in class. Example five. This will be the last one we do today. Okay. This is not much different. It's barely different enough to even give it a, its own example, but they do. 4x minus 1. Now they're going to tell you to find. Uh, yeah, there's two parts. We'll do the first part and I'll let you do the second part. Okay? So it says, you probably could do this even without my help, I would think. Now this time we're adding two functions together. All right? So what you're going to do is you're going to do what we did earlier, but then you're just going to take the answer to f of 3 and the answer to f of 2 and then do what to them? 
just add them up, okay? So it's really not much different than what we did before, just a little bit of a twist to it. So f of three, so what are we gonna do? Take that three, put it in for that x. Can we do that in our head? Four times three is what? 12 minus one is 11, so that would be 11. And then plus f of two, let's put that in here. Four times two is eight, minus one is seven, thanks for your help. And then so what's 11 plus seven? 18, very good, we got somebody alive there. So that's it, your answer is 18. Pretty easy, huh? What's that? I'm going to let you do the other one. So, again, this one's a weird one because they, um, they just put letters in here instead of numbers. But we've done this a couple times already, several times. So let's do that. Go ahead. Put that in there. Put that in there. Subtract them this time. It's subtraction, so you've got to be careful. And then come up with a final answer. I'll give you 30 seconds. Go. Again, you're just taking A, you're putting it in for that X. You get an answer. Take a B, put it in for that. And then you got to subtract the two from each other, or subtract the second one from the first one. Let's do the F of A. All right, so all you're doing is just rewriting this, except instead of X, what is it? It's just an A, all right? So this is going to be 4A minus 1. And then put a minus sign because of this minus in between. Now, here's where you got to be careful. Since you're subtracting something, that something over here on the right should be in what? Parentheses, all right? That's really important. And now you just put the B in for this. So what do you get? 4B minus 1. Yeah. You could, but you don't need to. But you could. But the second part right here, the parentheses right there, is really necessary, I think. I think it's really important. The first one, you don't really need it. So why is that parentheses important? Because this is a minus. If it was a plus, I wouldn't need that parentheses. But it's a minus, so what do I have to do to that minus? Give me one good math word. Distribute, okay? Distribute it through here like this. All right, so 4a minus 1, I'm just going to write that down because I didn't really do anything to that. What's this going to be? Minus 4b. What's this going to be? Minus a negative 1 is plus 1. All right? And now you just add like terms. I got a 4a and a 4b. I can't add those together, so I just write 4a minus 4b. But I can add these two together right there. Negative 1 plus 1 is what? It's just 0. I don't need to write the 0, so I can just leave it like that. It's not so hard, is it? It's a little bit weird kind of putting in another letter for another for a different letter, right? We're just putting an A in for an X, then we're putting a B in for the X. It's kind of weird, but you get used to it after you do them a while. All right, so here's your homework. Um, we'll call it, well, we haven't given any homework on this 2, 4 yet, so we'll call it part A. Even though I'm teaching part C today, right, um, we'll call it part A for the homework because it's your first homework on 2, 4. All right, so that's that. So it's pages 133, whoops, 133, 134. It's numbers 17 to 24, you're doing all of them. And then that is the stuff that I taught yesterday and the day before, back before we had break. Okay, so that's that stuff. And here's basically all the stuff that I taught today. And it should be real quick and easy. It looks like there's a lot, but um, you should be able to do them very quickly. So it shouldn't take you near as long as what it looks like right here. 17 to 24, all of them. Yeah, this is all one assignment. And then 25 to 59, just the odds, okay? Tell you what, let's take a look at 17 to 24 together, okay? And um, 
because it's a little different. Actually, on those, I'm going to let you use uh, the graphing calculator. Use Desmos or whatever graphing calculator you have. I would use the Desmos. I think it's a lot easier to use. So I'm going to quit recording now, but I'm going to go to the problems and we'll do a couple of these just to kind of get you rolling because they're a little bit weird. 25 to 59 should be no problem. It's exactly what we just finished doing so that I don't have to go over those. But 17 to 24, let me go over those for just a minute. 